Absolutely. And speaking of identity, perfect segue, you on page 14, you're talking about the the overall structure and the focus of the chronicler. And you make this key point I'd like for you to unpack. You said the chronicler has not lost sight of the northern tribes, for they yeah. constitute, quote, all Israel, a key term that speaks of unity and common ancestry. And so this is something that um, I, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it and, and what you meant by that and, and how it relates to, I mean, I have my own ideas, but I um, have you on because I want to hear from an expert. What do you mean by yeah. all Israel? Why is it significant? Let me say this. Why is it significant that all Israel is not just Judah, yeah. that, that there's more to it than that? Yeah, that's great. So this is one of the reasons why you have nine chapters of genealogies mm. because the chronicler is including the northern tribes as well which is kind of a little bit surprising when you think of that because of their history remember 722 uh, you have i mean they've been the apostate kingdom as well you've got the idolatry for so many years and then they also uh, the assyrians come and you know take um deport people and samaria gets defeated but what the chronicler, again, it's coming back to their identity. God has called his people Israel, mm -hmm. and therefore that is part of the vision of the people of God. So he's including these other tribes. So in the beginning, but there's also times here you see the theology of the genealogies being played out in the narratives. Just one example is that during the time of King Hezekiah, after the northern kingdom has kind of come to an end, that there is a story of Hezekiah inviting northern tribes, even after the Assyrian dispersion, mm. and he calls them and they humble themselves. There's that key verse in Chronicles, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek right. my face, Second Chronicles 7.14. That theology of Second Chronicles 7.14 is actually, um, all the vocabulary is in this story of Hezekiah. And what is it about? It is him inviting the northerners to be part of the Passover. And there's this wonderful um, way that this prayer is being played out within this story and Hezekiah prays for them and there's healing. And then you see at the end of that chapter that the northerners and the southerners are worshipping together. And here's the fun thing. Even some of the people who'd been deported to the northern kingdom, mm -hmm. they follow them and they come with them. So it looks so you've got this multi-ethnic people of God. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to this expression, all Israel, it is saying it's not only Judah, it's not only Benjamin mm -hmm. or Levi. God had a plan from the beginning that there would be this people of God. Uh, you could think of the prophets Ezekiel. There won't be two kingdoms, but there'll be one kingdom, a united people of God. Mm -hmm. And within that, ethnic groups outside of Israel are even included in all Israel. Right. That's a huge point to make. And the, <clears throat> the reason that I point it out is because a lot of times it gets overlooked that even in the Hebrew Bible, Israel was not a homogenous ethnic right. unit. There, there have always been, I mean, two of the tribes are half Egyptian. That's right. And you've got, I always tell people 50% of the adults that left Egypt and made it to Canaan are Gentile. Uh, mm -hmm. There's only two, so it's not a big number, but, but you know, Joshua and Caleb, Caleb was Kenizzite, um, yeah. grafted in, to use Paul's That's language, right. grafted into the people, to the tribe of Judah. That's and right. you talk about that um, specifically, a theme in Chronicles, it's uh, page 44, when you're going through these genealogies and you get to Judah, you yeah. point out a number of times where Gentiles or people who are supposed to be on the outs are yeah. specifically linked to the tribe of Judah. Why is that important? I think that's incredibly insightful and meaningful, and I, I hope people understand and, and wrestle with that. Um, what, how does that shape how we look at and think about Old Testament and New Testament concepts of Israel? Yeah, that was a, that was actually a surprise to me when I came across that in looking at the tribe of Judah. And there's a scholar called um, Gary Knoppers, K-N-O-P-P-E-R-S, a scholar who's done a lot of work in that. 
um, and Scott Hahn is someone else who's done work in it. And what they have noticed is that within the tribe, you have a number of marriages to non-Israelites that are specifically recorded. And there are also um, uh, going right back from the right back from the beginning with Judah and being his wife being a Canaanitess, that you have um this idea that the Abrahamic promises, creation, remember we said the genealogies go from Adam and it takes us all through to Abraham, and then it comes to Israel, but then it's coming to Judah, right? That's kind of this climax. Right. And I think what it is communicating to us is that God's plan that there would be a multi-ethnic people of God, all Israel, including the nations that this is being fulfilled through Judah in particular. Mm -hmm. And my own work has been in um, Genesis as well. And what's interesting in Genesis, to your point, is that I don't think people really recognize that Joseph's wife was Egyptian and their kids were half Egyptian. Right. And not only that, but they get to be two of the tribes. Yeah. So, I mean, isn't that fascinating? Yeah, there's always been, uh, you say, I'll read specifically on page 47, you say, sometimes there's the parentheses false assumption that the Old Testament is exclusively Jewish, whereas the New Testament is open to people from all nations. But this misinterprets the redemptive storyline of the entire Old Testament, and it misses a key emphasis in the presentation of the tribe of Judah in Chronicles, which underscores that foreigners have been incorporated into the line of Judah. And then it goes on the, the payoff, the kingdom being established through David's line ultimately anticipates the Messiah, whose kingdom is comprised of both Jew and Gentile. Do you see this as what Paul is building on in like Romans 9 through 11, particularly Romans 11, when he talks about the tree and branches being grafted and, and then he yes. culminates with, and in this way, all Israel will be saved. Do you That's think right. he's drawn from Chronicles? Um, I, I don't know if it's specifically from Chronicles, but I do know that, um, you know, already in Genesis, right from the beginning, there is the theology that not all Israel is Israel. Mm -hmm. So there's so and especially it comes up with Isaac and Ishmael. Ishmael is the son of Abraham. Um, the term for son is used both of Ishmael and Isaac. But as you know, it says that through um, Isaac, your seed shall be named. Right. And then you come to Genesis 22 and he says, you know, take your son, your only son. And you're like, hang on, he has another son. Right. But it is so it's so that in that sense, there's a narrowing of the children of Abraham are actually going to be children of promise. Mm -hmm. So that's and you also see them within the storyline that this idea of Israel already in the Old Testament included um, the uh, Gentiles as well. So I think there is a theology that runs through it. Um, a good example is when you have Passover. Again, Passover is very Jewish, right? Uh, so how do you, what about the foreigners who are in your midst? Well, if they get circumcised, they're in. <laughs> they become part of the people of God. And and so they, the laws themselves will also say, you know, you for the same law for the native as for the foreigner. Mm. And there's that real inclusion that I think we've missed in the church. And I know I've heard some well-known speakers have done teaching on this and have really emphasized, oh, it was really Jewish. And this is why we're under the new covenant. Now we are under the new covenant, but I think we miss this whole thread. And I think Paul picks mm. it up in Romans as well, mm. uh, redefining Israel in terms of it's not all biological descendants, but it is right. children of faith, Jew and Gentile. Right. That in, in popular preaching and teaching, that gets glossed over to an astounding amount. Uh, yeah. And 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 particularly, I'm not even going to get into politics, but just when people yeah. start thinking about world politics and everything, that's right. It's amazing how they they completely miss th Jesus saying things like, you know, or John the Baptist, God can raise up children of Abraham from these rocks. That's right. And and it, it just gets linked to this uh ethnic identity rather than covenant identity. Yeah. 
That's um, right. So That's I, right. I loved, I actually shared that page, that quote on my Instagram, on Disciple Dojo Instagram, um, it's saying this, this is such an important theme. Yeah. More of us need to recognize it and you could do a whole study on it, but I was, yeah. it was really and, great. Can I just add, yeah, go ahead. can I just add one last thing? The other thing too is, you know, we need to remember that when Abraham's name was changed from Abraham to Abraham, I mean, this is Genesis 17. This is not at the end of the narrative somewhere. From the very beginning, the identity was multi-ethnic. I will make you a father of many nations. Yes. And so in that same chapter, Genesis 17, circumcision, it's all non-Israelites, those who are not your seed who are being circumcised. So I think we need to see this narrative coming right from the book of Genesis. And I think that's why Chronicles is is picking up these stories and the genealogies to make the same point and the theology is being driven here. Yeah, I, I love it. Viewers, if you're watching and you want to dig deeper into this, start with Genesis, look for all the multi-ethnic uh, instances embedded in the text. Um, Chronicles is there, Ruth, a whole book about it. Ruth, uh, that's right. Yeah, there's just, there's so much. In